this is Tito back with another video on the Redmi K20 Pro and today in this video I'm going to be showing you the latest spark OS on this device. And you can check out the card right there if you don't know how to flash this particular ROM. And this is the spark OS version 6.0 aka Flare and this is the official build again based on Android 11. The build date here is 9th July 2021. Here you can get the download link and stuff and let me tell you this is a OSS vendor based ROM not a MIUI vendor based ROM if you are wondering. And all the download links the specific recovery I have used everything will be listed in the description box below so do not worry. And again this is a OSS vendor based ROM not a MIUI vendor based ROM so the vendor itself is included in the ROM file itself. But let me tell you if you are moving from the latest MIUI like the Indian latest 12.5 MIUI like the 12.6 Xiaomi.eu make sure you are fast boot flashing your stock ROM then clean flash this particular ROM that will be a better choice in my opinion otherwise your recovery might be gone. Yes I have done a previous video on this Park OS 2 and earlier it was based on the MIUI vendor but right now it has switched to the OSS vendor and let me actually explain how is my experience over here and yes the ROM is smooth enough but sometimes in the UI I have seen a little bit of stutters here and there and that is not ignorable I would say. Yes, coming from the MIUI vendor based Arrow OS, this is really noticeable sometimes even in normal like swiping or something anywhere like in Twitter or opening Play Store and stuff, sometimes the UI does get a little bit choppy here and there I would say. First let's talk about the stock camera. This is the stock camera that you get. This is a Google camera over here and of course you can switch the lenses with this Google camera. This is good that you are getting an actual proper like good enough Google camera over here by default. In case if you are wondering this is the Gcam 7.3 Burial Gcam and it has everything working like the night sight and stuff all those things are working flawlessly no issues with this. Also here I have installed the ANX camera as you can see this I had to flash magisk for installing this ANX camera over here. Let me actually open it. So as you can see this ANX camera is working flawlessly no issues with that and yeah. Overall the experience has been great. If you don't know how to flash the ANX camera on the Redmi K20 Pro just click on the card right there and with this if you switch to the video mode the 4K 60fps options and stuff you will get everything. Do not worry about those even the pro mode and stuff everything is working fine. No issues with the ANX camera here. You get this park launcher present by default over here and as you can see this is how the recent panel looks like. We have the screenshot then the clear all option then the freeform pin split screen close app etc you will get if you tap on a particular icon over here in the recent panel. And let me show you in the settings we have this icon settings and there you have the icon size the font size changing option then the icon pack you can also change if you have some different icon packs or something. In the home screen we have these many customizations. Yes the good thing is you can disable the suggestions if you want to then we have the gradient option and the gradient on bottom allow edit option and the google app of course is there. In the app drawer settings we have the show icon labels in drawer then you can hide some particular apps. In the misc settings we have the double tap gesture anywhere in the home screen double tap to sleep is working fine no issues with that and in the developer options you will get more options I guess and here let me actually show you if you double tap anywhere in the home screen this makes the phone sleep and if you are noticing the lock screen clock yes you get this amazing looking lock screen clock which is from android 12 of course and yeah it will also appear in the lock screen looks very beautiful as you can see and yeah the fingerprint scanner is working fine no issues with that even from the always on display if I show you let me actually show you that okay so the fingerprint scanner is not working right now let me show you one more time okay as you can see the fingerprint scanner is working flawlessly let me try one more time with my left hand thumb and as you can see the fingerprint scanner is not a problem on this ROM but here right now it's not working for some reason I don't know it never happened to me but yeah sometimes as you can see on the always on display as you can see right now the fingerprint scanner worked but sometimes it doesn't work in video but yeah while I'm using the device normally it did not happen. Again on the home screen to the left we get the Google's discover page no issues with that and did you notice that choppiness okay so it appeared for one second and swiping down anywhere in the home screen gets you to the quick settings panel and swiping up in the home screen you are getting the app drawer of course you can search for any particular app over here no issues with that and if you see here you get like the other home screen and the widgets in the home screen are working fine and if you want to get this Android 12 clock widget you can get it from the description do not worry. In the quick settings panel you can edit and add multiple toggles and you can see there are a lot of toggles I would say and you can add any particular toggle that you will want to. So let me show you what I have added. I have added the dark theme then the Android 11 screen recorder is there and with that you can record the device audio and the microphone audio at the same time and the show stop dot touch screen and we have the lower or smaller size video quality is there bigger file size limit and stuff is there for screen recording 
then we have the hotspot do not disturb data saver and we also have the always on display option you can enable or disable it and the fps info also appears over here as you can see on the top left you are getting the fps info so yeah that works fine and we have the reboot toggle too so if you tap on the reboot option as you can see you are getting this recovery option so you can tap and hold on it to directly reboot the phone to recovery and you also have this sound toggle over here and if you tap on hold on it you are getting the volume panel by the way i have changed the volume panel and this is how it looks like looks very cool and as you can see you can increase or decrease the volume with this of course and the heads up you can disable then the night light you can enable or disable then the volume panel option is also there you can tap it just once to get the volume panel anti flicker or disrimming mode is there you can enable it if you want to then there is a live display also in terms of sound you are getting this moto audio over here so as you can see there is a smart audio and you can also edit and adjust the audio however you want to so this is great that we are getting this moto audio over here whenever you are plugging in a headset it will ask you that if you want to tweak the sound or something so this is very good that we have all these options in the settings panel this is how it looks like we have the fireworks there you will find all the customizations of the whole ui then if you scroll down we have the battery display sound all the settings in the about section this is how it looks like we have this android version over here as you can see the version shows as 6.0 the code name is flare and there we have the spark os logo then we have the release type as official maintainer's name shows as nj and we have the android version as android 11 of course if you keep tapping on it you are getting this like kind of so yeah it is based on android 11 the security patch is latest of july 5th 2021 the stock kernel on this particular rom is the soviet star kernel and we have the build date of 9th july 2021 in the system panel you will also get the system updated and as you can see you can check for spark os updates over here and if you check the front camera settings we have the front camera raised dialog then the sound options are there you can disable the sound of the front camera popping out if you want to then we have the camera calibration option so if you want to actually calibrate the camera and if it's stuck or something we can definitely use this calibrator option that is very cool and the stock keyboard here is gboard because i have flashed the gapps included build talking about the stock in call ui this is how it looks like and i would say yes you do not get the call recording option or something if you're looking for that you will be missing that over here and let me tell you the sound quality via the headphones and even like bluetooth headphones and stuff are super fine no issues whatsoever that i have faced and faulty calling as well is working fine again now in the settings panel if you go into the fireworks you will get the customizations this is how the customization panel looks like on the top we have this fireworks logo up there first let's jump into the themes we have plethora of customizations here if you go into this ui customizer it shows in pretty bold font as you can see let me actually disable the fps info it's looking weird so from here you can actually enable those android 12 kind of accent colors over here it will take the colors from the wallpapers that you are using so yeah you can use that and we have the accent color picker over here too so you can pick any kind of accent color as you can see wallpaper based accent over here so you can enable that for enabling the wallpaper kind of accent colors and we have the fonts over here i guess and as you can see from here you are getting plethora of fonts as you are noticing so yeah the list is not too big but yeah we have like normal fonts that you are gonna look for let me scroll down we have the dark themes over here then we have the color bucket option if you're using the dark theme then we have the lock screen clocks and here just notice the amount of customization we have for the lock screen this is huge amount of customization for the lock screen i would say and as you can see we have the android s style and android s dp3 it shows over here and the tux option and we have the sami clock then the one plus roman one plus minimal one plus numbers then the fluid version 2 and the orono mnml box everything that you get even the fluid version 1 is there then we have the samsung colored ones so yeah lot of lock screen clocks that you will get but of course you're gonna use that with the android s clock because it just looks amazing in my opinion as you are noticing on the always on display let me go back we have the icons and this is how we have the icon customization icon shapes you can change from here then we have the icon pack changing option then also we have the settings dashboard icons changing option then we have the switch style you can also change it to however you want to i have been using it with the fluid and the navbar style you can also change from here now in do not disturb mode i have seen this particular bug like just notice in the status bar right now this is how it looks like as soon as i disable do not disturb it will be normal but as you can see right now there is some gaps over there this happens sometimes so yeah then we have the g visual mode we have the status bar height changing option and you can set it to medium large or the extra large options then we have the header size changing options rounded corners i have been using it with the medium that's why it looks like this navbar colors you can also change from here 
Let me go back. We have the quick setting customization. We have the quick setting tile customization as well. And you can change it between this oxygen OS kind of quick setting toggle or something. If you want to have it like that, let me show you. This is how it looks like in oxygen OS styles. And we have the quick setting clock and stuff. And we have this change brightness slider. I have changed this to REY. That's why it looks like this. And of course you can change this option. So this is very cool that you can even change the brightness slider. Amazing amount of customization pretty much that you will get. Now I have disabled this colored status bar icon style over here. That's why the icons just do not appear on the status bar like the colored icons. Because if I have that enabled, I can't see the information over here. Like right now, what speeds I'm getting because I use this separate app for internet speed meter and stuff. So yeah, notification count, you can enable colored header icons is there. And we have this material display button and we have this clear all button changing option. You can have it on cross or oxygen OS. Then background alpha for the quick settings you can change. In the quick setting media player we can enable this and we have the volume panel style. I have been using it with a shape sheet but just notice how many volume panel options are there. We have amazing options again. We have the default AOSP expanded and the compact audio tiled the MIUI option then the oxygen OS option project 404 option everything even the shape shift option is there. By the way with shape shift it looks like this and show app volume also is there. Let me go back in the quick settings panel. This is how it looks like. We have the quick setting items. We have the battery percentage and stuff. So normal customization regarding quick settings. We have the vibrate on toggle touch, etc. Then we have the tile animation too for the quick setting tiles and the quick setting column and row customizations are there. In the status bar, we have the clock and date customization. You can enable the AM PM style, then the date, font, everything you can customize. Battery bar is there. You can enable and customize it thoroughly. Extra status bar stuff is there. We have some padding option and we have the show 4G instead of LTE. Then the Volti icon and stuff is there. You can of course change the Volti icon right now. I have been using it with this Margarito Volti option and we can change it to anything else like the Motorola Volti icon or stuff like that. As you can see right now, the Volti icon has changed and the VO Wi-Fi icon you can also change from here. So if you have enabled VO Wi-Fi icon or VO Wi-Fi itself, then it will appear over there. But I have VO Wi-Fi disabled right now. Traffic indicators are there. You can use it. But yes, I use that separate app. And in the status bar battery indicator, we have these battery icons. In the battery styles, we are getting only icon portrait, circle, dotted circle, failed circle, etc. But yes, the big dotted circle or the big circles are missing. Then we have the battery percentage changing option. We can change it to next to the icon or inside the icon. And we have the battery percentage when charging and stuff. Let me go back in the status bar items. We have the headset, Bluetooth, etc. icons. And you can also enable this camera option and stuff like that. So this is for the status bar like icons, of course. Now let me go into the lock screen here. We have the lock screen charging and the charging charging info, charging animations and stuff you can enable. The FOD icons are there and here the good thing is you can change this FOD icon animation. This is just the animation which appears on the lock screen whenever you lock the device. You can have it on Spark, Oxygen OS and the One UI 2, One UI 1 and the MIUI default. By the way, let me show you up close how it looks like. So just notice how cool it looks whenever it appears over there on the lock screen. Let me show you one more time. So yeah, there is some focus hunting issues with this Redmi Note 10 Pro I'm shooting. So that's how it is. Let me go back and we have the fingerprint icons. Of course, you can enable or change these fingerprint icons if you want to. And here you can also set a custom fingerprint icon from your gallery or something if you want to use that. So that is great. And we have the screen of fingerprint option. Then we have the fingerprint animation. And of course, you can change it to anything like the Cyberpunk 2077 is there. And you can also change it to McLaren, Energy, Cosmos, all the animations are there. Even the Realme animations, Oppo animations are there for the fingerprint scanner unlocking. Then inside lock screen extras, we have some background blur option. So if you want to have some blur in the lock screen, you can actually do that. As you can see right now, it looks much, much better because I have some lock screen blurred over there. And we have the status bar enabling option, then the hide lock icon option. I will just disable that. Then we have pocket addiction and stuff. You can enable it if you want to. But yes, one thing that is missing in my opinion, that is the always unlock with the fingerprint scanner. Definitely that feature I miss coming from AirOS over here in this ROM. In the lock screen music, we have the media cover art and stuff. Then the lock screen notifications are there. We have the notification counter. Let me go back in the lock screen shortcuts. You can customize it. Always on display, you can schedule it from here. Let me go into the power menu now. Here we have the AOSP settings. The cards and stuff are there. And the power menu options are there. We have the advanced reboot, of course. This is how the power menu looks like, by the way. We have the smart home controls. Then we have the advanced settings. From here, if you enable the advanced settings, we have the directly rebooting option to the recovery or fast boot from here. And you can, of course, have this hide on lock screen option. So if you don't want the power menu to appear in the lock screen, you can enable that. Let me go back. We have the gestures. Here we have the AOSP gesture settings. 
Let me show you, we have this swipe right screenshot, the three finger screenshot gesture anyway, and we have the long screenshot, edit, share, and delete options. So all the options you are getting over here, quickly open camera and the system navigations and stuff are there. If you go into the settings of the system navigation gestures, the full screen navigation gestures, I mean, you have the amount of screen height to be used for the back gesture, then the gesture bar length and the radius customization. And yes, I did change those. That's why you are seeing this pill bar is quite large and thick. And we have the haptic feedback enabling option, the back gesture animation, and inside advanced gestures, we have the extended swipe action. And of course you can customize that. Let me go back from here. We have the two button and three button navigation as well. Then we have the quickly open camera option, then the prevent ringing and some more options. Let me go back. In the extra gestures, we have the double tap to sleep on the status bar and lock screen. Also, we have the brightness control gesture. So if I'm swiping a finger on the status bar, as you can see that accordingly adjusts the brightness. So this is a very handy feature in my opinion. I do use this feature on a daily basis and this is very helpful. Long press power button toggle torch is there. So that is cool. Let me go back from here. We have the notification customization heads up you can customize and disable from here let me go back we have the battery charging light you can have it on do not disturb and stuff edge lighting is there and yes edge lighting is working over here that is a really amazing thing i have changed this to notification color and to get it working i would say just enable the show on new notification and check this show for all those notifications and stuff that's how you can get the edge lighting notifications enabled let me go back and we have the extra notification settings kill app button then the notification sound effective blink flashlight for incoming calls is there in the notification ticker of course you can enable that and we have the nav bar kind of customization again over here let me go back we have the button settings here we have the volume rocker wake in the key cursor control and we have the misc settings here you will get the gaming mode then the sensor block per package suspend action and the animations this are the like screen of animation and stuff you can customize and the disable holy white transitions you can do that from here in the audio we have the vibrate on connect call waiting and the disconnect option launch music up on headset over here and in the usb configuration we have the file transfer option this is very convenient for me i always select that and on the bottom we have the radio info and stuff and there is the dose brightness if you want to force some lock screen or the always on display brightness you can do that let me go back that was all the customizations for the whole ui in the battery settings we have this kind of battery settings and let me show you on top if you tap here you will get the full battery usage as you can see here we have the thermal profiles and from here you can change the thermal profiles to default benchmark or the camera dialer gaming or streaming or something like that so yeah you're getting a huge option for the thermal profiles and we have the battery saver then the adaptive battery is there and if you scroll down more you will see the last full charge the screen on time and we have the design battery capacity the current battery capacity the charging cycles also the battery temperature shows up over here so you get all the informations that you will need regarding the battery and let me tell you the battery life over here i have got about five to six hours of screen on time and yes you can get basically six hours of screen on time and with all the oasis vendor based roms the battery life is not as good as miui vendor based roms but yeah definitely the battery life is not anywhere close to the ROS official build basically this is a oasis vendor based rom so that means it will give you more performance yes the battery life may not be above seven hours of screen on time or something if you're expecting that and here if you scroll down we have the smart charging smart cut off everything else fast charging is also working over here no issues with that then if you scroll down we have the display settings there we have the lock screen settings here we get the battery level on bottom always show time and info or always on display wake screen for notification ambient music ticker and stuff is there let me go back we have the brightness level the dark theme night light everything is there in the live display we have the display mode and from here you can have it on the outdoor or the very bright kind of display let me actually show you if you enable that the display will go completely bright and this is just insane amount of brightness you can't definitely use that in indoors and we have the anti flicker or the resuming mode over here color calibration you can change the rgb of the screen then we have the picture adjustment option we have the hue saturation intensity and contrast of the screen let me go back we have the styles and wallpapers if you go into it we have the theme changing option and you can customize the theme in the wallpapers we have this park west wallpaper over here if you're using that and in the grid option we have all these grid options by the way the wallpaper i'm using over here is from the wall p app i'll list it below and in the clocks again you are getting these lock screen clocks you can also have this minute accent color and stuff from here so if you want to enable that you can and we have the screen timeout rotation and there we have the 180 degree rotation and stuff if you scroll down more we have the double tap to wake and the enable blurs option as well in the sound settings we have the media call ring etc volumes of course then the show volume panel on the left side over here then we have the ringtone vibration pattern changing option the ringtone changing option is of course there for like phone ringtone and the notification sound of course you can change then the dial pad tone screen rocking sound charging sound charging vibration etc 
me sound enhancer or the me audio direct is there and you can change it between these youth edition and stuff and the sound quality via the headphone jack is great again and even with bluetooth the sound quality is amazing and the presets options are there as well and they do work fine and if you have a really great pair of headphones you can enable this hi-fi audio option also we have this clear speaker option if your speakers of the device has some dust or something you can do that and then let me scroll down we have the security option over here in the settings option, we have the screen of fingerprint, quick unlock, then the scramble pin layout and stuff. But again, there is no option for the always unlock with the fingerprint scanner. I did show you the fingerprint scanner speed already. So let's just set up the face unlock now. So looks like the face unlock setup is done. Right now, let's just double tap anywhere in the home screen to get the phone locked. And right now, if I double tap to wake, so I have to swipe up, I guess. So after I swipe up, as you can see, the face unlock is working fine. Let me try one more time. So yep, the face unlock speed is pretty fine whenever I swipe up, as you can see, it is unlocking the device. With a motorized camera, I would say the face unlock is not the very convenient way to unlock the device. Also, we do have the app locker over here and you can lock any particular app just from tapping on that particular app over here. You can hide the notification. We have the lock app after instantly 15 seconds and the screen of option. And let me tell you, even if you tap on their notification or tap on the app's notification, that will work flawlessly. No issues with that. App locker is working super fine. There is no problems with the app locker. As you can see right now, it shows like this. If I tap the fingerprint scanner, it will unlock the particular app. So here I have opened a couple of apps as you can see in the recent panel. So I'll open them one by one to show you guys if they are in memory or if the ROM is actually able to keep them in the RAM itself. So let me first open Chrome. As you can see, I had this UFO like opened over here. So yeah, it is working fine. And the Facebook still in memory. Twitter, yes, still in memory. Play Store again, still in memory. YouTube app is in memory. Instagram, as you can see again. In memory and okay so i did not have spotify open but right now i did open so let's open one of them so as you just noticed there was some like stuttering over there so yeah twitter is reloading play store is in memory youtube yes youtube is still in memory chrome chrome right now reloading so the ram management may not be that great but here, let me tell you that while like switching between apps and stuff, I did notice some choppiness here and there that I did see some of the times. As you can see again, Twitter is reloading. So that is not a problem anyway. But yes, those choppiness in the animations, I definitely can notice. And if you're worried about the benchmarks here are the end to end Geekbench scores of this ROM. Again, a CPU stress test over there in your screen. By the way, if you're wondering about the banking apps, yes, the banking apps are working fine even if I have the Magisk Hide enabled. The safety net should be passing right out of the box over here. You can use banking apps without any problems in this particular ROM. The DRM Info stays L3 because I have broken it previously. Otherwise, if your DRM Info shows as L1 in your device, it should be L1 if you have not broken it earlier. And talking about Google Assistant, let's try it. Hey Google. As you can see, Google Assistant is working fine. Let me try one more time. Okay, Google, as you can see again, Google Assistant is working flawlessly, no issues with that. So the Spark OS is basically a really good option if you really want a performance based ROM, but you can like bear with a little bit of choppiness in here and there in the UI. But yes, if you want gaming performance and if you want like a really good amount of customization and definitely if you want this big font in the lock screen of the clocks like android 12 definitely the spark OS will be one of the best roms if you want all of these things so thank you so much for watching this video guys give it a thumbs up if you liked it subscribe to the channel down there if you have not yet this is Tito from kdn tech signing off for today and i'll be catching you guys in the next one bye, -bye now